Okay, so I'm going to show you how to solve the problems in the Chapter 6 um, homework set, beginning with this first one. Um, this one says it's the hydrogen spectra. Um, so that was referring to the line spectrum, and we've seen this phrase Balmer series before in the lecture notes. Um, and when you go and look at the notes, there's an equation that sort of is used for these kind of calculations. It's called the Rydberg equation. I'm going to simplify the Rydberg constant because I don't really need that many significant figures. Um, so that's the Rydberg constant. And then the equation says it's 1 over n1 squared minus 1 over n2 squared. Okay. Um, so the trick here is to properly define n1 and n2. And the thing to remember is that n1 is always the smaller number. So n1 is going to be two. And n2 in this case is going to be the bigger number, which is four. If I define them backwards, I end up getting a negative number and you can't have a negative wavelength. So that doesn't make sense. So if you make that mistake, it's relatively easy to recognize. So, so watch out for that. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is sort of just plug everything in. So we go one over lambda equals the Rydberg constant. That's 10 to the 7 meters inverse. I know it looks a little funny on the iPad. Um, and it's going to be 1 over n equals n i, sorry, n1 equals 2. So we're going to go 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over 4 squared. And I know that 2 squared is 4 and 4 squared is 16. So, so if I had reversed this, it would have been 1 16th minus 1 quarter, which would give us a negative number. So that's how I know that. Um, N1 needs to be the, the smaller value here. Okay, so we're going to subtract 1 quarter minus 1 sixteenth and um, that gives us uh, 0.1875. So 1 over lambda equals the Rydberg constant still. a decimal point in there after the 1, times 0.1875. Um, so then we go and multiply 0.1875 times um, 1.097 e to the 7, and we get a really pretty large number. So 1 over lambda equals 2056875, um, but I only have 4 sig figs in my constant, so I'll just keep 4. So 2057. Zero, zero, zero. And that has the units of meters inverse because that's the units of Rydberg's constant. That tells me that we're not quite done because um, a wavelength should be in meters or nanometers, not an inverted meter or nanometer. So that, that happens because of this term, this is 1 divided by lambda, that, that's not just plain lambda, right? So to solve for that, what we're going to do is multiply both sides by lambda. And then uh, to get lambda by itself, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to divide by this big number, and that's how we undo that inverse thing there. Okay, so one divided by two hundred five seven zero zero, and so in the end, our wavelength here equals four point eight six times ten to the negative seven meters. Um, 10 to the negative 7 meters has a tendency to be written in nanometers, and so we, we, in our lecture notes we saw it in that format, so I'm just going to convert it that way so that I can kind of picture where it fits. So 4.86 times 10 to the negative 7 meters, and our conversion factor to go from nanometers to meters is 10 to the 9 nanometers for every 1 meter. So that means um, there's 486 nanometers is the wavelength of light that is that happens when you go from n equals 4 to n equals 2. And so then I look on our uh, third slide on, on lecture 6, on chapter 6, and you'll see that that 486 nanometers is right in the region between like blue and green, so we would typically call that color 
indigo. Or, although if you wrote blue-green, I would definitely give you credit for that. Something along that line, anyhow. Okay, so the next question is, um, what are the allowable values of the magnetic quantum number, which is the one that's m sub l, for a 3p orbital? Okay, so um, when I get a question like this, I always start with the principal quantum number, which is n. That's the principal quantum number, and it equals 3 here because it says it's a 3p orbital. And and I just, uh, the next set of quantum numbers is the value L, the angular momentum quantum number is L. And it can be, um, it can range from zero all the way to n minus one. So if that's true, then um, n minus one would be three minus one, so two. So L could be zero, one, and two. When we did those quantum numbers, we said these have names that we've been using to describe the geometry, the shape of the orbitals. Um, and it would be SPD in this case. Um, so the orbital in question is the 3p orbital. So that's what happens when L equals 1. Okay, um, M sub L is based on L. And so the definition for that is that it can range from negative L all the way to positive L. So if L is 1, then my M sub L values are going to be negative 1, 0, and positive 1. Okay, so that answers that question. Uh, and it says, what do these different numbers describe about the orbitals? What they're actually describing is their direction relative to... It describes their direction relative to kind of like the nucleus. So if you... If you remember what a p orbital looks like, here's your nucleus in the center. Um, there's, you know, sort of these figure eight or infinity signs, however you want to think about it. Um, balloons, bow ties, whatever. Um, so there's one in the vertical axis. There's one in the horizontal axis. These are supposed to be the same size, but but you get the idea. And there's also one kind of coming out and going back into the into the screen, into the page. Um, so th these different numbers kind of represent the direction. So one of them, um, one of them would be the purple figure. A different one could be the the red. So maybe negative one here might refer to the purple. Uh, zero might refer to the red and the bluish color, the turquoise color could be plus one. So like that. Um, so it refers to the direction um, of each orbital. Uh, each number represents a specific set of quantum numbers. So that's why you end up with three different shapes, because m sub l has three values here. Um, oh, I already sketched the 3p orbital, so there it is. Um, and it says, explain how it is similar to a 2p. Okay, so a 3p and a 2p are exactly the same shapes, but the difference is that, like, a 2p orbital, let's just take the case of this red color here. Um, a 2p, if the red was the 3p, a 2p would be the same shape but smaller, kind of layered inside of it. So I'm going to draw the, those orbitals in a lighter color. So they kind of... We kind of exist in the same general space, but they're smaller. So that's the difference between a 2p and a 3p. 3p are larger, um, like that. Okay, so the next one is acetine is the largest element in group 17. So, of course, I'm going to pull out my periodic table. That's the first step. Okay, so group 17 is the halogens, the halide group, uh, and Acetine is AT, and so it's, it looks like it's element number 85. So I want to write the shorthand electron configuration. So I'm going to go back to, oh, let's pick a brighter color. I'm going to go back to the noble gas beforehand, which happens to be xenon. And then I'm going to trace it forward from there. Um, so we have the 6s2 electrons, which is cesium and barium. 
Then we have all of the F block, which would be the f energy level of 4, because the F block goes down by 2 compared to the period. And so that would be a full one, uh, 4F14. And then we have the D block, which would be 5D, because I'm in period 6, and the D block jumps down by 1. And that's going to be completely full, so that's going to be 10. And then we go 6P, and that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons. No, wait, sorry. That would be 5 electrons there, because it's in group 17. Um, so there's our configuration. And it says, how many principal energy levels are occupied by electrons? So the principal energy level is, is the n value. Um, and so I just look for the highest n value. And it looks like 6 is making an appearance here. And so if 6 is there, that means that levels 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are also occupied. So the highest is going to be um, the energy level of 6. And then it says, how many sublevels are occupied by electrons? Okay. So, um, sublevels are another synonym for the word orbital, and so that means like each shape or each um, m sub l value. Um, so there's going to be a lot for this one because astatine is such a big uh, molecule. It's Again, it's all the way to ele element number 85. So, um, each s orbital is one shape, each p is three, and d's are five, and f is is um, 7. So all you got to do is sort of figure out the total number. So the 1s, it, uh, so there's, you know, 6s orbitals, so that's 6 shapes. Or sublevels, if you want to call it like that. Um, total, it's n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, like that. Um, for the, the p's, there would be 3 orbitals in each one, and there's, uh, let's see, six levels, because we have six P there, so that'd be a total of 18 orbitals in that one. Um, the Fs, well, that's kind of interesting. There's only two F, like, um, periods, really, so it's 4F is the first one, so that would be um, just one of the F block, but there are seven orbitals, seven shapes, so we're going to get seven from that. And then the D starts at 3D, right, and we're at 5D here, so it would be 3D, 4D, and 5D. So three of them, and there's five shapes in each one, so 15. And to get our total, we just add it up. Okay, so it's going to be 6 plus 18 plus 7 plus 15. So our total number of orbitals or sublevels is uh, going to be 46 here. And then it says, how many orbitals in the fifth principal energy level are occupied by electrons? Okay, so we have the fifth principal energy level here. So there's, there's 10 electrons in that one. And then there's also kind of buried into what xenon is. There's a 5s, so that's going to be two electrons in that one. And there's also a 5p6. Um, so that's six more electrons. Um, there's no 5F in this one, because we only got to 4F, so we don't have to worry about that. And so it's going to be 18 electrons are in the fifth energy level. Okay, so now we come to the Aufbau diagrams. And again, um, Aufbau is just basically German for f filling, f filling up, filling from like lowest energy to highest. So um, each box is an energy level. Um, actually, each box is a sublevel, and uh, each color here is representing an energy level. So the purple one here is n equals 1, and the green one here is n equals 2, and the red is n equals 3, like that. And so all we got to do is fill in electrons. So neon has this configuration, and all we got to do is fill our electrons in. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And we can't make the electrons identical because that would violate the Pauli exclusion principle. So we want to make sure they're pointing opposite directions if they're in the same box. When I get to um, an energy level with multiple sublevels, I want to fill in in the same direction first. Then I go back and I fill it in with the electrons pointing the opposite way. In this case, it's 2p6. So it's all full.